Joining us here at Post 9 today is CIA Wealth Management CIO Neil McCurgy. Neil, it's great to have you back. Thanks Welcome. You. you do sort of have a constructive view of a disinflation. You do think there'll be room to cut before the year is out, right? We do. So obviously, uh, you know, we had firm inflation prints from January to March. April was a mini step in the right direction. We do think that the disinflation narrative will resume itself. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is we do expect the labor market to cool. We already are seeing signs of that. Eight million job openings is down 20 percent on a year-over-year -year basis. Less, less and less people are voluntarily quitting their jobs. That puts less pressure on wages going forward. Less pressure on wages means less spending on the services side of the economy, which has been booming. That leads to less service inflation. So that's going to bring it down. The second is shelter inflation. That has been a big contributing factor to sticky inflation. But when I look at the major market-based indicators of rent inflation, they have been cooling. If you look at Zillow, you look at apartment listing, they've been cooling for 12 months. And uh, the new rent tenant uh, lease is about at or below pre-market, uh, pre-COVID levels. That tells me that will filter through in the second half and that will bring inflation lower as well. So, so the playbook for equities develops how in, in that kind of scenario? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the, I think Mike talked about this a little bit before and uh, Sarah, you mentioned this as well. The data is going to look a lot murkier going forward as well. Already we are seeing this differences in data. One set of data is telling us the economy is quite resilient. Aggregate consumer spending is good. The service economy is still very good. On the other hand, the labor market is cooling, not rapidly, but it is cooling. Uh, the housing market has taken a step back as well, and then manufacturing has slipped back into contraction. So this is going to be a very difficult time for equity investors to parse through these conflicting signals. Our expectation for equity returns are fairly muted for the rest of this year because you know, we've had a 30% rally in equities. Valuations are at 21, uh, 22 times. We saw that the reward for beating earnings was not that great. The punishment for missing earnings was a lot. It'll need a good amount of catalyst to, to make the equity markets move higher. So muted equity returns going forward. But I do think equity markets can grind higher if we get to the end of the year, which shows that we can achieve that $240 a share in EPS. And the market is reasonably okay with the growth environment, which leads to them believing that we can achieve $275 a share next year. You like bonds better right now? I like bond, bonds slightly better, only because you know yields are once again, they've pushed higher a little bit here. You can create a bond portfolio today with a diversified mix of government bonds and emerging market bonds even, and uh, treasuries as well as high yield bonds. You can get 6% yield. That's a great amount of current income. At the same time, if the economy does weaken more than anyone is anticipating, the Fed is inclined to cut rates. We know that. They're dovish at heart here, right? They will bring rates lower and bonds will once again become a pretty good diversifier against equity volatility. So we like bonds slightly better. We just had a long discussion about whether politics would get in the way of a cut that was otherwise deserved. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a thought on that? You know, the Fed is a fairly independent agency. They're, they're mightily focused on their two mandates. Uh, the Fed has proved time and again that they're not political. They will not make a judgment based on monetary policy, based on their view of an election. They've proved that quite a few times, most recently was in 2008. In October, they cut interest rates twice uh, right before uh, the elections. Obviously, the economy was spiraling out of control into the abyss because of the financial crisis. They cut twice, once in the regularly scheduled meeting and once during an emergency meeting. They did, in 2004, in September, they hiked interest rates two months before the elections, and that's when the economy was emerging from the dot-com crash and they decided to hike interest rates. So the Fed will stick to their mandate because Fed independence is just too important for the global financial markets.